recording and I'm going to turn it over to Carol, Christy and Nicholas um, for them to tell you a little bit more about the PMI Ready certification. Thanks, Beth. So good morning, everybody. I hope your summer conference is going really, really well. My name is Carol York and I teach um, business finance and marketing primarily project management at Cary High School in Wake County. And I'll let my other um, co-presenters introduce themselves as well. Christy, Great. you wanna go first? Sure, yes, I'm Christy Dye. I'm the territory manager for the state of North Carolina. Um, I'll go ahead and put my contact information in the chat. I see some names that are new to me. Some of you may have even received an email from me in the last 24 hours. <laughs> so you'll probably have my email there also. And then I have with me today uh, Nick Haber, Nicholas. Which do you prefer, Nick? <laughs> I call you Nick. Nick. Yeah, everybody calls me Nick. That's fine. So Nick <laughs> Haber, I'm the director of STEM and CTE programs over at CertiPort. Um, and I've been uh, managing the CertiPort relationship with PMI. Uh, Project Management Institute that uh, has uh, allowed us to bring this program and bring really bring project management to this um, this this high school audience. Um, and Carol's been one of our stars in teaching this and and helping us make sure that we've got something that's that's going to work for for our students and for and and, and make sure it's an industry recognized credential. Carol, you want to you want to take us away? Oh, thanks, Nick. And I'll I'll slip you, you know, the payment under the table for that late, a little later. Okay. Um, so, you know, as as Nick said, you know, we have been we have been teaching project management in North Carolina for, you know, seven, eight years now. Um, and I've been teaching it for seven. So um I was super excited when we started working with PMI earlier in the um actually last year to get the certification up and running so that we could have an industry credential at the high school level. Um, for those of you who are unaware, um, with certification from the Project Management Institute, um, prior to this PMR, you had to be a high school graduate um, at, for one. Um, and I believe there was even an, an 18 age requirement in there, along with quite a bit of um, education and um, work experience in order to sit for certifications. And so we were pressing, um, at least I know in North Carolina, we were pressing to have um, a credential that was, you know, high school available to at the high school level. Because we like to be yeah. in that forefront of getting certifications to our students. I know we did that with Microsoft when it started being released. We were one of the first states to pull that in. So we, we're all about our credentials and partnering with um, with CertiPort to get those into the hands of our high school students. So, um, and Carol, yes, if, if I can maybe just add a couple of things about PMI. Oh, you've got it right here. Great. Yes. So, <laughs> P, yeah, PMI, um, they're a 50-year-old institution that's really defined um, what project management is and have created the the best-known industry-recognized credentials um, that you have uh, that that you have here. The PMP is really the the gold standard mm -hmm. in um, in that, and it's it's a really sought after, very hard to get certification, um, and they wanted to build steps to get people there with the, the CAPM is a, the Certified Associate Project Manager. As Carol said, you have to have a high school diploma before you can even sit for that exam. Um, and so we were looking for something that could be uh, fit in, in as an industry recognized credential that would be available for high school students. All right, I'm, I'm hearing that my screen is not sharing nicely. So let me see if I can get it to pop back in. Sometimes they would have us turn off our video and just have the person talking video on so I can shut mine off. Hmm. Whoa. And my, uh, it's not wanting to pop up on my screen. Am I, or, is anybody seeing it? Um, no, it just increased the size of the um, virtual summer conference one. Okay. So we, Let me Try this one more time. <laughs> and I think we lost Christy altogether. She'll come back in. Oh, no, I'm 
Oh, thank I'm you. Here. I just turned off my video okay. to see if that's what was causing it. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. So it's saying it's sharing, but it is not popping up on the virtual screen. Chris, I um, mean, um, Carol, you might want to try to upload it with the plus mark down here. It will convert it to PDF for you, no problem. So, okay. Let me try that quickly. <laughs> that seemed to do a little bit better than screen sharing for us during the conference. Um, it skews a few of the slides sometimes, but still it, it works and serves as a decent. Skewed is better than not at all, right? There you go. That's right. So it's uploading now. So let's see what we Patty get. says she sees it. I don't see it, but Patty does. Patty Hudson. Oh, okay. I see oh, it. It's there. Okay. So maybe there we're. Okay. So now we're back. Yay. Yes. <laughs> Great job. Okay. Okay. Um, so as, as Nick was saying, you know, obviously PMI is what in North Carolina, our state curriculum is based around the Project Management Institute's body of knowledge. So we've been teaching Project Management 1 and Project Management 2 based on PMI standards already. And so um, this high school level stepping stone with the PMR should help our students to build up towards the CAPM and ultimately the PMP if that's the area they're targeting. So this is meant to be um, an early, a, a high school slash, you know, college level certification that's industry recognized um, that's coming into play. So that's the whole purpose of this certification. The um, PMI did not want to adjust the certifications that they have to fit the high school level. Um, and I think that's actually a, creating the new one was actually a better opportunity for us and for our, our schools. So, you know, since this one is, you know, focusing particularly on the certification, um, for those of you who are not teaching project management, um, and I know many of you are because I recognize your names from previous um, sessions, but for those of you who are not teaching project management, who are considering this as a, um, as a pathway in your school, you know, project-based learning is definitely the direction that things are going. Obviously, now we're seeing more that our, um, our courses are being based on, you know, project-based measures instead of standard exams. So, you know, this is definitely the direction that I think education is tending towards. Um, and project-based learning, you know, is around critical thinking and skill application, not just general knowledge. You know, being able to work in teams and groups, um, developing communication skills that take our students beyond, you know, this. <laughs> um, you know, project management is a life skill. You know, even if you're not planning, you know, unsure as to where you're wanting to go with your, um, with your career, <coughs> at some point, you know, you're going to want to, you know, plan a social event or you're going to, you know, buy or build a house. And all of those things require project management skills. So, uh, if you're considering project management as an option as far as course opportunities, you know, project management is in every career and it's something that students can see relevance um, currently while they're still in high school and not just down the road. Um, so, you know, as educators, you know, what is the cert certification to us? You know, why, you know, why project management? Well, you know, if you, Go out and do a bit of research. You know, it is estimated that by the year 2027, that most jobs are going to be project based. And the estimate is somewhere, you know, pushing the 90 million project management based jobs are going to be out there. I mean, wow. You know, if nothing else, you know, preparing our students for some that type of statistic is pretty phenomenal. Um, the demand for project managers is growing. And even if you don't look at it from strictly the title project manager, um, if you've been out, and I know all of you have, because we we did it prior to pandemics, 
if you've gone out and done industry visits and ask employers what they're looking for, the list comes straight from project management skills. It's, you know, communication skills, you know, ability to think outside the box, you know, being able to handle, you know, critical thinking and, you know, work with a variety of people at different levels. All of those are project management skills, you know, being able to do time management and manage your stakeholders. And all of those are skills that come from that project management foundation. Uh, and good project management skills really build, you know, happy and successful employees. And ultimately can build happy and successful high school students and even middle school students if you know when we begin starting at that level um, because it does provide them with a great foundation all right so as far as the pmr is concerned um the pmr i i, I was working with it over the past year um and yeah, allowing it to be in my, you know, working with it in my classroom. And it's set up as a three-part module. Um, the first one is learn. So there are modules in place to help the students learn that can be used as a supplement to our state curriculum. Um, there's practice modules through Measure Up, which allows students to have practice tests. And then, of course, there is the certification. And this model was developed um, through industry professionals in conjunction with um, with Pearson and PMI and CertiPort. Um, the curriculum can stand alone, um, but in our state it doesn't have to. You know, we have we have a bigger model um, than than the standalone here, but it is a fabulous supplemental um, for our curriculums. Uh, the learn component um, is four modules. Um, it is positioned through a program called Brightspace, um, and it's broken down into four pieces. The first one is Fundamentals and Core Concepts, uh, which is really kind of an overview of project management and, you know, what the discipline kind of entails. Uh, the second piece is Business Analysis, which is determining the purpose of the project, the need for the project, and all the components involved in determining which direction to go. And then the last two are actually based around how you approach the project management cycle. Um, traditional methodology, which is what we have been more historically teaching in North Carolina, um, which is also referred to as waterfall method. Um, traditional methodology is we um, initiate a project, we plan for that project, and then we execute while monitoring and controlling that project from beginning to end. <clears throat> Agile, which is becoming more of the focus of project management over the newer versions of the PMBOK, the project management body of knowledge, um, it's becoming more agile focused. And agile is where we really don't have a certainty of where that project is going to go from beginning to end. And so we, we manage it through iterations. So in other words, we can only see a component of the project, so we're going to start working on that. And then after we kind of get going and see where things are, then we can get a better feel for where we need to go next. So rather than planning and executing, we plan a little bit, execute a little bit, then regroup, adjust, and take the next step. And I want to say that, you know, from what I'm seeing, Agile is becoming more prevalent maybe than the traditional method, but they're still pretty heavily balanced. Um, I think in the professional realm, there's still a lot of, you know, traditional waterfall method in place. So the hence, you know, the importance to, to cover both concepts. Um, as I mentioned before, the practice is through um, Measure Up. Um, I was super impressed with the practice modules. Um, I think had I been able to get to them a little sooner in my semester, um, I think my students would have probably been a little more successful in, in certifying. But it's very well organized. Um, you can pull have the students pull in based on concept. So if you want to focus on a piece of the certification, you can do that. Um, of course, if you've done any kind of certification in your courses with other curriculums like you know accounting or 
um, or Microsoft or Adobe, those time certifications are something that can really stress students out um, because they're, they're not really accustomed to being under a, a clicking timer like that. So being able to practice those time scenarios is really helpful so they can learn how to pace. Um, you can have them do smaller time tests. So if you want to give them, you know, 20 questions to do in 20 minutes, you can do that. Um, or you can put them in what's considered a, a real simulation where they get the full 47 questions and 50 minutes to take it. Um, and then once they take the practices, it gives them answers along with explanations as to why that answer is correct. So it's not just, you know, a list of multiple choice questions and an answer key. It's the explanations as to why that's going to be the case. So um, furthermore, as the instructor, you get the results reporting by, by students. So when your student completes a certification practice, um, the results are emailed to you so you can go in and use those to um, help you deliver what you're going to handle next in your class. How, you know, use that reporting to um, adjust what you need to teach or reteach or maybe re um, remediate as far as prepping them for that certification. Um, and then finally, the certification itself, which um, is actually going to be the proof of learning for project management too, um, of course, is through Certiport, obviously. Um, it can be done in person or it can be done through um, an on, the new online home-based testing. Um, I did a little of both this year. I found that the uh, online testing was actually pretty easy to work with. Um, I, I was surprised at how, how easy it was to do the online testing. Um, but the questions, there's 47 questions on the test. Um, there's 50 minutes to complete it. And as with many of the certifications, passing is 700 out of 1,000. Um, you can apply for accommodations for your students who require those um, via application. Um, it's a relatively simple process, particularly you know, with things like extended time. And so when you're doing your certifications, um, when that student logs in under their account, it will automatically provide them with the extended time accommodations upon request. So um, that's, the, that's the process of the new system. All right, um, so that's kind of my canned presentation. Um, so now my questions, we can open it up to, you know, Christy or Nick, is there anything that you would like to add? Um, I will pause and let somebody else take the, take the floor. Thanks, yeah. Carol. Um, go, go ahead, Nick. Um, thanks, Carol. I thought that was great. Um, the, the one thing I'd want to just sort of add color on is, is if you're if you're teaching career and technical programs, um, chances are you're teaching some form of project management already. You know, pr project management is part of so many career paths, as Carol said, but it's it's really deeply embedded in IT in hospitality, in healthcare, in construction. Um, you know, once you really look into it, you're gonna see that these skills um, are not not just needed, but they're, uh, the industry is expecting people to know this particular process and in the way that, that PMI defines it. So um, you'll be doing a really good service to your students, preparing them for industry, by getting them um, the skills and the knowledge that's gained by going through the Project Management Ready program. Christy? Oh, thank you, Nick. Uh, yeah, um, I put the accommodations link in the group chat. So if you do have anyone that you are sending an accommodation through for the PMI certification exam, be sure to do it well in advance. Um, Pearson takes uh, full charge of that and they take at least 10 days and so it's it's a little bit of a process so you'll definitely want to start um, in advance I also have a slideshow that goes through it step by step um, on the accommodations process if you've never done accommodations before 
just send me an email and just put in the subject accommodation slideshow and I'll send that over because that's super helpful. And then um, as far as actually taking the certification exam, I know quite a few of you are signed up to take the certification exam this afternoon. You'll be taking it via Certiport exams from home. And so basically what that means is that instead of downloading Compass and downloading the PMI PMR exam inside of Compass, you're actually just going to a browser and we serve both of those up to you. Uh, Teresa is our proctor today for, for those of you who are part of that event. And um, you should look for an email from Teresa Curtis with your links to launch today at, at um, let's see, it should be one Eastern Elizabeth, correct? I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. So, um, but if you've registered, you already know and you've received that email. Um, if you haven't registered and you would like to take the exam, you're also welcome to sign up for a time slot via Certiport exams from home or take it in Compass in your classroom. And I'm glad to provide teachers um, free certification exams to get them certified. When a teacher is certified, it really helps them know what to talk about and make sure they're covering all of those exam objectives, which, um, which line up to the state's curriculum. And that way, you know your students are more prepared for the certification exam. And I know Carol and I were talking and she was just saying, you know, now she's gone through it and now she's certified. She knows, you know, more what to focus on. You know, of course you can't say exact exam questions, but you can definitely make sure that you're covering all of those topics. So um, let's see, are there more questions in the chat? I've been trying to address them as I've been running across them and oh, I see perfect. you had to, so. <clears throat> perfect, perfect. Um, for those of you who are part of the test pilot, you'll also would have received a demo um, from PMI uh, of the courseware. If you haven't had a chance to play with that, um, go in and do so quickly. Um, the, typically a 14 day demo of their curriculum um, but she went in halfway through and extended it for another 14 days. So you should all have some time left on that demo to, fig um, to go through it. They figure it's about 60 hours worth of work. So just so you know how to plan time-wise accordingly. Um, so the 14-day demo, Tammy, would have been one that was sent to you um, from PMI directly. She copied me on those, so let me make myself a note and I will go through and find yours and forward it to you. And if I don't see one for you, I'll go ahead and request one for you. And I, I have your email because I know we've been emailing back and forth. And um, let's see here. If, you, if anybody wants to unmute and ask questions, you're sure welcome to. You don't have to put them all in the chat. Um, if you want to keep track of any of these notes or save any of these notes from this session that have pulled up in the chat, do you see those three little dots at the top of your chat window? If you click on those and select save, that will let you download the notes from this chat with all the links that, that um, Nick and Carol and I have put in here including my contact information. Thank you, Christy, for and pointing that's... that out. That'll be helpful and to And also the presentation is yes. going to be saved um, in, the, um, in the session resources for the conference as well. Yes, and Carol, have you sent me this one? I don't have this one yet, right? No, I'll send it to you afterwards. Okay. I was actually waiting right. to make sure we didn't have any edits, so I didn't throw you Perfect. off like I did with the last one. <laughs> That's okay. And I will send it right to her once I get it. So it should be up tomorrow, maybe, or something like that. She's been super speedy at getting everything um, added. So, Absolutely. And for those teachers who are new to giving certifications in their classroom that are going to be offering it this year, I also have created a getting started guide that goes over um, the certification exams and um, 
you know, all the options of your testing with Compass or the options that you're testing with um, CertiPort exams from home. Um, we actually suggest you try Compass first, and then if um, if that doesn't work for you, you're always welcome to use CertiPort exams from home. The, the pros of using Compass are that you can download it and install the exams and give the exams at whatever time works best for you in your classroom, where with CertiPort exams from home, they start at the top of the hour. There's no way to change those time spots because these are actual virtual machines that we use and clear and rewrite and, and have ready for the next set of students to come in and take their exams. Um, currently, there's no price difference between using CertiPort exams from home and Compass. So like I said, you're, you're free to use whichever one works best for your needs. And that will be in the session resources for the session also. Um, there is a practice test piece of it, um, which is on Measure Up. Um, and that the instructions for those are included with your demo or when you purchase it. So that will be not in this session piece. Christy, could you send me those files that you said were going to be in the resources that um, troubleshooting and the. Um... Yes, absolutely. All right. And I'll have I'll have those loaded to the resources also. OK, OK. I don't even mind sending them directly to Danielle if you want me to. Okay. She's been uploading. OK, that would be perfect. OK. Okay. And I just sent you the presentation. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So what other questions can we answer for you guys? Gosh, guys, do we, do we blow their minds that much? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'll, I'll just say this for those of you who, um, are taking the certification exam today, um, do definitely look for that email from me and go through a practice test uh, because that will really help you prepare. They, they line up so closely to the certification exam and you will definitely see a, an increase in your score. Um, I will share just a quick story about the first time I took a CertiPort certification exam. I didn't take time to read the questions before I took or read the instructions. I just jumped into the exam. I was so anxious. I just jumped in and started going and I spent 20 minutes on one question. And as you saw um, when Carol had that slide back up uh, a few slides back about the number of questions on the exam, you can spend about a minute on each question and that's about yet. So, um, and reading the instructions does not take time out of your certification exam. So definitely go through, read those instructions really good. If you don't know the answer to a question, you can mark it for review. Don't do what I do and just the first exam, I kept hitting next. Well, first of all, first time I failed because I took 20 minutes on one question. And then the <laughs> next time I thought, I'm just going to be smart this time and skip every question I don't know and go back and review it at the end. Well, if you haven't marked that question for review, then it will not show up at the end. It will just submit your exam and just be, the exam just assumes you don't want to answer that questions. And this is why I say reading those instructions are so important because I wouldn't have had to take it three times if I would have just read the instructions the first time and saw that you have to mark them for review and then you can go back. Um, as you can see, because the passing score is 700, you can definitely miss some questions and still pass the exam. But if you're like me and need more than one try to take this certification exam, I will always give teachers free certification exams as long as, you know, CertiPort allows me to do that. So if don't feel bad, if you have to retake it, just reach out to me. I'd be more than glad to give you another certification exam. You do want to reach out to me within about a week of when you're going to take it because it does take some time for me to get that free exam approved and get it uploaded into your system. And then whether you're testing on Compass in your own classroom or whether you're testing via CertiPort exams from home, 
You will need somebody else to proctor you when you're taking it. It could be another Microsoft teacher at your school or something like that. Today, we're providing the proctors in the event later today, so you don't have to worry about it today. It's just if by chance you need to do a retake. So, well, any not, questions you know, on I that? I definitely don't want to cause anybody stress, but I will tell you, I it it is not an easy test. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it, it, um, it made me think really hard. I will, I will say. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, and you know what, the, the thing that I like when I take an exam and I don't pass the first time, then I know what to study for the next time. Right. Yeah, so, absolutely. So I don't want it, it does to break um, down at the end. Um, again, if you've done certifications before through Certiport, once you get your, um, your score sheet at the end, it will show you which sections you scored where, so you know, okay, well, this module is the one that I need to focus on, or, you know, I did really well with this one. Obviously, for me, you know, the traditional methodology stuff, I had that down, but the agile stuff, I needed some work on. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so you can see what you need to work on. Yeah, and as as uh, someone you know focused on innovation, you know I, I kind of celebrate when people fail. Um, it's it's okay to fail when you're in a classroom with a teacher that's there to help you, and and we'd much rather have students fail than uh, not get the skills they need and fail when they try to get a job later in life. So that you know that's that's really our approach is we want to make sure that we're covering the material to what is expected by industry so that students are ready when they get out there yeah yeah i think if you make an exam too easy it takes away the validity of it if anybody can get certified on it without even trying right exactly so it just you makes it all the more valuable oh sorry Absolutely. i didn't mean to Talk no, over. You're, ab you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, if it's too easy, then it doesn't have any meaning. Other questions? All right, we still have some time. Does anybody have any additional questions? Here's my contact information. I haven't put it in. Um, was the sort of port as rigorous as PMI? Um, Lou, with regard to the you mean the PMP? Um, so I haven't taken the PMP yet. I've been studying for it. Um, I would say at the level that it's being targeted absolutely um obviously they're not targeting a project management professional so you know if if a, a high school student were going in to sit for the pmp no i mean the pmp is going to be much harder but if you're looking um at it from the perspective of where that student's level is the the pmr is equivalent at the level that that person is. Um, I've been studying for the PMP as well, and I found the, the PMR to be challenging. So I'll answer it that way. I passed, and I did pass first try, but I passed with a 700. So and it's, I was it's, efficient and effective. <laughs> and it's, it's based for a different job, right? A PMP is designed for someone that's going to mm -hmm. be in charge of project management at a company uh, or project management ready would be more in a position for somebody like a project management coordinator or a, uh, an agile team member um, mm -hmm. that someone that would work under someone with a PMP. So you know, when, when the exam was developed, um, you know, understanding what the job that's available for that person would be and, and what the skills and knowledge they need to have to be successful, that was taken into account and, and how the test was designed. Mm -hmm. um, does that answer your question, Lou? Great. So you probably noticed um, some of you have asked for pricing. I went ahead and just put it in the group chat so you'd know what the pricing is. 
And then um, you can, you know, if you need an official quote or anything like that, let me know. But again, with this said, I'm always glad to give teachers free certification exams. Um, so far, I've got in there the exams. Um, I, I highly recommend going, if you're going to purchase exam by exam rather than exam pack, um, you know, basically, if you're going to give more than about 28 exams, um, then the exam pack 500 license is going to be your best option, even though you'll never even use anywhere near. It just will save you money over buying the, you know, licenses exam with retake. Um, I, I definitely don't recommend just buying voucher only because it, it people do a lot of times need to retake it the second time. So, so I definitely um, highly recommend the voucher with retake option. And then the curriculum that uh, PMI has put out is, is awesome. You probably, you know, if you're on the test pilot, you've been probably using it. Um, there's the pricing for that also. All right, any additional questions? Maybe they can use this extra time to go through a practice test in preparation for the exam this uh, afternoon. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Beth, did you have anything else you wanted us to cover? No, ma'am, that was it. Just a general overview of the new certification. Um, that's it. And I'm really excited that CertiPort's given us the opportunity to have these um, demos that they have been sending out to the participants that had signed up. Very tickled that we're getting that opportunity to practice test today at one. So that's it. Yes. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, I can't everybody. Wait. I can't wait to see all the new initials after everybody's name. <laughs> all right well if if there is nothing else then i mean i hate to hold people if there's nothing to you know for them to do yes tammy was asking where the link for the practice test is yeah i was just responding to her they're all unique codes for the practice tests and so um i will just um check my email and if i haven't sent her one i'll go ahead and resend it okay